Hi everybody, Adam here. Welcome back to our Lego room. In today's video, we're taking a look at the integrated Tricksbricks R104 Monster Double Slip Crossover. This amazing section of track is really going to open up a lot of different opportunities for us around the, the layout. And you know, on top of that, it just looks amazing super happy with it and you know today i'm going to show you how i've initially integrated it into the layout and we will also put it through its paces by running trains over it and seeing how they perform now previously in our last video i went through with a tank car and you know sort of manually ran the car through the different options in this crossover and i was really impressed with how smooth everything was uh you know it was really a lot of you know smooth operation easy to work all the different switches and you know it's really fun to see all the different possibilities and combinations for how train cars and trains can move through uh, the various aspects of this crossover. So really looking forward to seeing how the, uh, the moving trains perform. And for the initial test here, I'm going to be using my Union Pacific train. Uh, you know, one of my workhorse Lego trains, great reliability. And you know, I think this is a great one to start off with here to see how it operates with the, the crossover. Now, in terms of integrating this into the layout, I have put it just after our corner module here on the train yard side of the, the layout. And I'm using the, the bottom two tracks here to operate the the main line so the idea is that the two top lines will carry down into the yard and towards the the grain elevator there and the the bottom two lines will be connected into the main line so main line trains on either track can use this as a way to change which main line track they're on or to even exit out to the to the yard. This configuration was based on a suggestion from a comment that I got in my last video and I really liked the, you know, sort of the reasoning behind it. It's a nice way to give, you know, both mainline tracks access to the yard, allows us to move trains from, you know, mainline track to mainline track if we want to. And it also leaves us an open section down here where we could put in a switch to uh, bring trains out onto a side yard over here. Uh, and you know, have a nice long side track here uh, where we could store you know, longer trains. That was the concern if we tried to use this uh, particular crossover on this outer edge here for this outer siding. So I think there's a lot of great things here, a lot of opportunity from this. So we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, what this configuration means and where we might go from here with it. But let's jump into running the Union Pacific around the layout and see how it performs. Now the the room in general and the layout is a bit uh, a bit chaotic at the moment as we're getting ready to pack a bunch of stuff up to go to a train show in a few days time. I'll cover that more in an upcoming Lego room update video, but uh, you know just understand that things are a little chaotic at the moment and that is why. But you know, I really wanted to, to put this initial crossover test together just to see how things would perform. So that initial test went well. 
just running straight through the the crossover on that outer track no signs of slowing down no weird clickety clackities or anything like that so the the next thing here let's see if we can on the fly change the configuration what is this going to give us we want that will go through there and then that will go through there that'll come down there okay fingers crossed that this is going to do what we want it to do here Ooh, okay that worked nicely a little bit of a slowdown as it moved through the all the different switches there, but pretty nice. In general, I'm not sure how much I would want to change the, the switches on the fly while the train is running at full speed. Uh, but, you know, once I get the, the different configurations down and, you know, I... I have that all sort of memorized and I feel comfortable with it. It wouldn't be too bad. The only thing I want to watch out in the short term is that I don't run the train off of one of these siding uh, side tracks that doesn't go anywhere. So let's watch again. Really nicely done. Happy with how that works. Let's try a different configuration now. So this time, theoretically, the train should come into the, you know, go up here and then just go around on the second mainline track. little bit slow through there but pretty pretty good happy with that it is with a longer train the fact that it's going starting to enter the curve while it's all navigating the the switches uh, i'm sure you know is bound to slow things down a little bit and that's not a bad thing let's watch this again as it comes around here this time it is on the inside of the the main line track there which is really nice it's been a while since i've been able to navigate trains you know back and forth across the different main line tracks that was really smooth so that's good. It's nice. It can navigate those two mainline tracks without issue. That's one thing I wanted to make sure, you know, like if this was directly on the main line here, I wanted to make sure that crossing all the different switches there wasn't going to result in any slowdowns or uh, any sort of, you know, degradation to performance in that because obviously the main line gets used a lot and the trains are going to be coming through here over and over again so nice to see that there's no issues there we've got the train coming around again here so it should navigate through yeah no issues there so let's try another configuration so now this time it should come back to the outside mainline track. Really smooth. And then as it comes around, it should then stay on the, the outside mainline track based on the way the switches are set now. So that's really nice. That, you know, answers some of my initial questions. There's no issues with trains passing over these, uh, these sections of track here. Having both mainline tracks 
on the the crossover i think is going to be you know a lot of fun and will really open up a lot of things for us it'll let us have trains off in the yard here and bring them out to either mainline track and then it'll give us an easy way to get trains back into the yard afterwards when we're looking to uh, you know switch up the trains that are running around the layout and then you know as i mentioned by leaving that area open there we allow us ourselves to put in a a switch at a later date to come off down this siding here or this edge of the table uh, which will create a nice siding to store trains on so a lot of potential with this now the the next thing that i want to try here we don't have a full yard set up yet but i'd like to see how it works with navigating the union pacific back into the yard so i'm going to stop it over on the corner over here and then try to run it backwards up into the yard there so now for backing up, we need to make sure we've got all of the, the switches set correctly here. So first one, so it should come up this way. Then this should make it go through up to here. And then we should carry straight on up into that top siding there. So that should work. Let's fire the train up here and see if it does. Okay, running the train pretty slowly here. Shouldn't matter though, as we're traversing in, it should just form the way we want it'll give me a little extra time to make sure that it stops correctly so that's doing everything that we want there that is awesome so let's come up here and let's get that to stop maybe come on stop 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 the, so that worked exactly the way that we want, you know, except for the fact that I think the, the battery is either dying in the, the remote or in the, the locomotive. So that'll be a good thing to refresh before we, we take this train to the, the train show. But, you know, that was awesome to see the, you know, I think it's cool to have the, uh, the trains be able to traverse fully off of the, the main line into the yard. Uh, you know, it's going to allow us to do a lot of really interesting things. And, you know, it's going to, you know, we've got the short yard at the moment. The track will carry all the way down here in front of the grain elevator. And, you know, the next big thing to, for me to figure out sort of, uh, long term for this part of the layout is, you know, how many, how many tracks do we want to have in the yard? Uh, two is cool. Uh, it's going to give us some interesting potential here. Do we want to have more? What track components would get us more in a reasonable fashion? Uh, you know, we do want to have some different industries along the outside edge of the uh, of the that this inner table here. So probably generally only want to have one more track line going down towards the end there. Uh, there is the potential coming this way that we could fit in couple of different track lines depending on if we can make the geometry you know work for traversing to those uh, those two extra lines there but you know if we added at least one more we could very easily have you know another switch here which opens up to you know a third uh, a third line moving down through the the yard and industry area which would be really nice because if we did that, you know, we've got three nice lengthy tracks uh, in this part of the yard over here. We'd have a nice long siding track on this outer edge over here. 
And that would give us, you know, right out off the bat there, easily uh, four trains that we could have, you know, staged away in addition to uh, whatever's running on the, the main line, which would be really cool. And, you know, there are some other opportunities around the layout for having some sidings, whether they can be super long or not, we'll have to see. But we definitely have, you know, the option at the end there. We've got a very short couple of siding lines um, on up against that wall there. So, you know, different options that we can use. But I'm really excited about the potential of this because I want to get all of our trains, you know, off the shelves, off the walls and down onto the tables here so that they can be accessed and that it's easy to, you know, relatively easy at least to move trains on and off the, the main line here as we want to try different trains and different configurations. Obviously, you know, moving a train into the yard like this and coming off of the outside main line, it's going to require, you know, probably stopping whatever's on the inner main line to allow that, uh, that train to traverse that piece of track there. But, you know, that's fine. I think that's believable. It's quite reasonable to do that. And it's not something that you're going to be doing all the time. So, you know, and with the, the outer line here as well, uh, there's ways to stage and move trains around that wouldn't even require always traversing uh, over to the yard there. So different things to consider. Uh, really excited about the potential of this. And, you know, like I said, this is an amazing track module. It looks super awesome in the layout here. And, you know, obviously because of the, the size of our Lego room here, which is quite large, uh, but still, you know, for a mammoth piece of track like this, uh, you know, not really large enough because we're not going to be able to fully utilize this end of the, the crossover for those two lines right there um, in this configuration. But I think that's fine. Uh, you know, it'll be nice when we take this out to shows you know, there's the potential to use more of the functionality of it there. And then, you know, if we try it in different parts of the layout or, you know, we work on, uh, you know, an even bigger train table at some point, we can, you know, look at different ways to, to use this in the overall layout. But for now, even without being able to use this end here, it's going to open up a ton of functionality and operations and different things that we can experiment with, which will be awesome. Now I'll run the train back out of the yard here and onto the layout. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please make sure to do so, so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. And if you've got ideas on where I can move this around the layout, if you don't think this is the optimal place for it, if you think there's some other things I should try before committing to this, make sure to write those in the comments below. Really interested to hear what you have to say. Like I said, this particular configuration uh, was a suggestion by somebody in the comments on the last video, and I'm really happy with how it's performing so far. So thank you very much for that suggestion. And yeah, it, uh, I will start this train back up again and run it around and we'll see how, see how that works. Really nice and smooth coming out of there. So now we need to go back and double check all of these switches. That should be good. I think we're good on everything again. And we don't need to change the ones up in the yard at the moment. So that should be 
that should put everything back to to normal operations the train is moving on the outside of the main line so uh, it should come past here on this outer track there it goes So thank you guys very much for watching. We will see you again soon. And like I mentioned, uh, you know, the room is a bit chaotic at the moment as we work towards getting things packed up for the, the upcoming train show. So make sure to check out our upcoming video outlining our progress for that train show and how everything's coming together there. And then we will film the, the layout at the show as well. So keep an eye out for those videos. And we will see you again soon. Take care. Bye.